People keep asking, what is that magic number that'll help the housing market boom again? Because we went from basically a 2.5% 30-year fixed rate to an 8 to here's where we are now. So what's in the agenda coming up? Well, it's all going to be on inflation. And today we had some breaking news. So today might be the turning point on when rates start to come down. So let's get over to the headlines that we're seeing so far. Powell came out and he's actually talking. I think he's talking at Davos, which is a, is a worldwide event where all the financial people talk. And he just came out and said this, we're getting back on the path, the dis, disinflationary path. Uh, then right through here, it says Lazard's market strategy a temple says he's still expecting three rate cuts. So what's in the cards? Well, let's get to an interview with Goldsby. Goldsby is the Chicago, uh, the Chicago Federal Reserve person. He sits on the Federal Reserve here and he just interviewed. Take a listen to this. Now he, yes, he's dovish, meaning he usually sees things in the point that interest rates are going to come down. What the Federal Reserve has been doing is working, but take his analogy for it. And then at the end of this video, give me a thumbs up if you think rates are coming down or a thumbs down if you think rates are going up. Inverse relationship there. But let's get over to his interview and then I'm going to show you how the markets are reacting so far today. So take it away. Now is another central banker. Austin Goolsby is here. He is the president of the Chicago Federal Reserve. It's good to talk to you. Good yeah, to see you here in Sintra. So, so we just heard from Fed Chair Powell on the panel. He said, we are resuming our disinflationary progress. Said we made a lot of progress, but didn't quite sound there yet when it comes to enough confidence to begin loosening policy. How do you interpret what he said? Well, you, you know the rules of the FOMC. I'm not allowed to speak for anybody else. I'm not going to try to get in the head of Chair Powell. I found myself very much in agreement with, it, with his sentiment that if you look over the last year where we got inflation coming well down, and I think we are restrictive, the Fed funds rate in real terms, interest rate minus inflation, is as high as it's been in many decades. And as inflation comes down, that gets tighter. We're real tightening. And I think you should tighten by choice, not, not by default. You know, so the, this argument that if we get more months of inflation readings like what we've seen in the last couple of months or like we saw in the last seven months of the year last year, that would give us a lot more confidence. Would give me more it confidence. It sounds like though you're there. I feel like you well, have the confidence. I don't, like I always say, I don't like tying our hands before meetings when we're going to get a bunch of data between now and the next meeting or September, or November, December, or whenever it is, we're going to get a lot more inflation readings. But I see some warning signs. The, the real economy is weakening. It started from a very hot level. It's weakened to something that's still quite strong. But if you're going to be this restrictive, for too long, you're going to have to start thinking about that real side of the economy. We have seen weakness in GDP reports, consumer spending, housing sales, ISM manufacturing yesterday. Are you less confident in the soft landing story? Well, I hope, you know, I've been saying for more than a year that I thought there was a golden path that was possible that we could get inflation down without having a big recession. And that would be historically unprecedented. And 2023, we did that. Uh, so the question is, well, how much magic is there to continue into 24? I still think it's possible, but as you say, there's, there's some of these warning signs and we got to be mindful of that. You only want to stay this restrictive for as long as you have to. And if you look at the progress that we made on inflation, it's heartening that the, what the, the blip we observed First in, half, at the first beginning quarter. of this yeah. uh, of this year has mostly looked like a blip or a bump in the road. We got to keep getting inflation readings like what we've been seeing recently. But if we do, it's if you take a step back, the, the arc of inflation is clearly down. We're way down. Last year was one of the biggest drops in inflation on record. And we did that without the unemployment rate getting above four that, percent. That, that's that's really that's an achievement on the dual mandate. Clause. Where do you expect the inflation rate to go from here? Because we're down to 2.6. Down? What do you mean where? Down. Well, it some people down. think it's going to be It's sticky. going down and to 2%. That's but the where last it's going. mile could up. take The longer. last mile. Look, my, you don't buy that. If I, don't, I don't really buy that. I think if you break out core inflation into goods, 
services, and housing. Goods are basically back to the minus 1% inflation that they were before the pandemic. Services coming down, they're a bit higher than the two and a half or so they were before the pandemic, but they're within shooting distance. And the whole puzzle has been about, well, why isn't housing come down more or as much as what we would expect? Because there aren't enough homes, right? Partly there aren't enough homes, but partly it's just the mechanical, the market-based rents are down. The inflation rate is down. And that has not yet reflected into the data. You saw Chair Powell talking about that, that it takes even more than a year to happen. If we were using the measures that they use in Europe, we, were all, we would already be at 2% because they, they, they measure it slightly differently and don't put as much weight on the housing component. So if you get improvement in housing as we expect there to be, I, I think we would be on path to 2%. Great interview. So what, what, what can we take out of that? He, he was going through it, but the biggest take there was, I've been saying for the last six months, actually the last year, the housing data is lagging. You just heard it right from his mouth. He said that that data is lagging. If, if we did the inflationary numbers based on any other country, we'd be right at 2%. So we're there. I think the Federal Reserve just is sitting back saying, well, if, if we cut the market's just going to go in mayhem again. You look at the stock market. The last time, everybody keeps saying, well, let's look at the 2008 crash. Well, the 2008 crash was exaggerated, or that's, a bad, that's not even a word. It was emphasized, let's put it that way, is emphasized the badness of it because the, the financial markets also crashed. You had the Dow Jones, the S&P 500. Those, those were crashing. There was financial institutions going out of business daily. 400 banks failed. You know, so people keep saying it's, it's similar today or it's gonna be worse. Guys, maybe you didn't live through those times. A lot of the people that are posting these videos, what were you doing back in 2008? Maybe you were in high school or in grammar school, but I lived it. So we saw all these things taken, taken shape at that point. So so a, a great interview that he just came out. The fundamentals, we're, every day I'm coming out here showing you the fundamentals in the economy are cracking. You know, the biggest point now is the employment numbers. And he was really skittish not to really say, well, when he was talking about a recession, he said, well, we avoided recession in 2023. And then he started rambling about some things. And I was like, well, he didn't seem that confident there, there's not a recession on the horizon. So now people are going to start freaking out maybe that there's going to be a recession or, th or things like that. But let's cross one bridge at a time. This was fantastic news uh, coming from the Fed or Fed officials when it comes to the inflationary numbers. So let's take a little bit of a look now and what the bond market's doing right here. We follow on this channel to figure out what in the heck's going on with interest rates is right here. The mortgage-backed security bond. Right now it's up uh, 12 ticks. It basically rallied at the beginning of the morning uh, and then just you know, kind of petered out from there. But all this news coming from the Federal Reserve, Federal Chairman Powell saying it, as well as his his cronies uh, are saying, we're restrictive, rates are high enough, and the numbers are starting to look good. You heard it right here for yourself. So what's the probability that the rates will change in the next couple meetings? Well, let's go back to the CMA Fed Watch tool. I thought this might change after these interviews. We're going to come back today and we'll start monitoring this. But right now it's saying in September, there's a 63% chance uh, that they're going to cut rates. So we'll keep an eye on that percentage to see how it goes. And we'll monitor that through September. And then we'll keep predicting from there what we think the market's going to do going out through the end of the year. So if you're out there and you're kind of sitting on the fence saying, okay, we're well, waiting for these rates to come down so I can qualify for a house or whatever, I'd highly suggest you don't do that, especially when you're in certain markets. Now, if you're in markets like Florida, California, Arizona, though they're, they're starting to really get engulfed in inventory, uh, but the rest of the country looking pretty darn good right now. So if you're out there trying to figure this out before the feeding frenzy comes, if and when the rates do get cut and you want to see, can you qualify for a home? Check out our, our website, theRateUpdate.com. But if you're looking to buy your first house, the first thing I'd ask you to do, check and see if the grant finder is going to help you. I just got a, a contract in this morning. Didn't really realize I ran a young man through the credit, uh, the grant finder. $6,500 we just got him. So we got a $6,500 grant that doesn't need repaid. He's getting a $500 credit toward his appraisal and a $500 credit toward a home warranty. So check that out before you do anything. But if you're ready to get started, 
no longer kicking the tires, you want to actually jump into this, well, kick the, click the apply now button, you're on your way. Or you might say, Dan, can I just call you guys? I don't want to go through all this stuff. I have some questions. Well, yeah, just go down at the bottom of our website. There it is. There's our 800 number as well as my email address. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Hopefully you're finding a little bit of confidence in my channel and also seeing the data that was being presented right now, shining a not a bad light on housing. So thanks for watching The Closing Bell with Dan Frio. I'll be back tomorrow to let you guys know what economic events are shaping real estate tomorrow. Take care. And if you haven't done yet, please do me one big favor, one favor. Hit the subscribe button right over there. I'd greatly appreciate it. Have a great day. Bye-bye.